Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and I'm back with yet another unboxing for the Tenaris Adventure system. I believe I did the original unboxing in two parts, if I'm not mistaken, like way back when I first got everything before I started diving into the game. I then recently did an unboxing for Tenaris uh, RPG, for the Tenaris RPG, going into more stuff over there. And now I'm back with unboxing the uh, Storage Box 1 and 2, and not just that, and uh, peripheral extras on top of it, which we'll get to last. So a bunch more in the Tenaris system to unbox. This might be the last unboxing I do for Tenaris. Frankly, I don't know. I, I don't know what else will be ever coming up for this, but in the moment, this is what we have. As usual, we have our coffee shot, our knife and all that. Although we have cold coffee today because this summer I've been doing cold coffee. Well, sorry, the sip over there. But they're basically every summer for the past I want to say nine, ten years, I've been doing lattes. Honestly, forget the summer. I've been having lattes for the past uh, nine, ten years plus. I want to say way back when. This is way back when. We're going old school here. And this, by the way, a general warning, this is an unboxing and rambling. If you're expecting just a straight unboxing, just a showcase of the components, a professional, you know, look and analysis of all those things, that's not what I do in my unboxings. My unboxings are just talking about whatever is in front of me and whatever comes to mind, including my history with uh, espressos. So, long story short, way back when, I want to say it had to have been, it almost guaranteed had to have been 2011? I think it had to be 2011. That would make the most sense. It's possible it's 2012, but I want to say 2011. So a while back, uh, I got my tax refund way back when. I made little enough money, very little enough, very, very, very little money, that there's something called, like, I think it's the, um, I can't remember what it's called, the workers' tax credit. I can't remember what it's called, the employment tax credit, whatever. There is a tax credit that effectively has, if you are working, but you don't make that much money, you get a tax credit back. So it's kind of like a, a bonus for working and getting paid very little money, which is what the case was back in 2011. And I got my tax credit back, and it was like $2,500 back. And it was like a $2,500 $2 check, which for context at the time meant I got a 10% bonus, 10% of my entire yearly income I got as a one-time check right away. And I was like, that's cool. And so I did what any responsible person would do, and I spent it all. I'm joking. I didn't spend it all. I, I don't. I don't do that. Uh, I did spend a little bit though. I think I, I allocated maybe like you know a few hundred dollars to like you know fun spending, and then the rest went to paying down. I don't remember at the time either savings, paying a mortgage. I don't remember what, but something responsible. I try. I try to be as responsible as possible says the guy who has a basement full of very expensive board games. Anyways, uh, so at the time, I went to Target. I don't know why Target. I was in Target. I don't remember if this was an intentional purchase or just a happenstance, but I was in Target, and I started to get uh, an espresso machine. At the time, I had been surviving on a Keurig. I never loved Keurigs, but I was tolerable of them. I had Keurigs. I was like, okay, this is my morning coffee. And I started to try getting an espresso machine. And so I bought, and I remember the 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 serial code, or I remember the, 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 the item code of what this item is. I bought a Mr. Coffee ECMP50. Why do I remember that? Because I bought it several times over the next few years. This can be history. You know what? You know what? Let's come back to the coffee store in a second. But we will we will get into the story of a coffee because we're gonna get to the cold coffee shortly. I will say I've taken the shrink off this already because I started opening it up and I was like, you know what? I should show you everything going on here. So let's go ahead and show you everything and then deal with it. So we have storage box one. Now I don't believe there are any goodies in these boxes. I think I'm about to show you a bunch of empty trays, which is why I'm saving the other stuff for last. Uh, but nonetheless, it might be worth seeing what you got over here if you are someone who um backed this or is interested in this because we got these over here, which are all I mean these are for padding and or this is the part where I don't know things again not the part where I know all the stuff maybe the space for rule books and that's where those are gonna go I'll figure it all out later I debated trying to sort it all and then come back to you and I was like if I try to do that I will never really show it to you all so maybe there'll be another video on the terrace box uh, unboxing and all that when I have it all sorted let's go through all these let's try to order these in reverse are these gonna cause a structural issue? I don't love this, I don't love this, you know? It might not cause a structural issue because this is the way it is, but because there's a bend over here, I don't like putting something onto it. Uh, so we're gonna take these out. Oh, this, this feels like it has stuff in it. This feels like it has stuff in it. And what about this? This, this feels like it has stuff in it too. There's definitely stuff in this box. Okay, there's stuff in the box. Let's go ahead and deal with it all. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead and open this up. And I will I will be coming back to my Tenaris Adventures playthrough. I don't know exactly when. There's a possibility that I can maybe i film on today maybe it's been a it's been a hectic few months honestly as far as just catching up and everything and so tenaris adventures playthrough has been on hold but it will be coming back to you we will continue to have exposure for that but in the meantime let's go ahead and see what we have in this box over here we have our cards and big monster miniature and so we got cards now this is the part where i'm going to, have to be very very careful what i do here because i don't want to mess up the stuff that i have does that go like that how does this go is this meant to go on top of that can't be right 
I don't know how that goes. We're going to figure that out later. But anyways, we have space for a miniature over here. We have our, our bosses cards over here. These are the dividers. We have something in here. And this is going to be Envelope of Secrets, Warriors Tier 3. Now, I don't know if these are all going to be replacements. I don't know what's going on in this, to be frank. Again, I probably should have looked up some of the stuff. Ooh, we have... Oh, this is cool. I don't... I think she's new. Is she new? Is she repurposing an existing miniature? I have so many of these things. So, I'm going to open up a little bit. So, this is the problem. Some of this stuff must be replacing stuff, and some of the stuff must be new. And the problem is, I don't know what's what. So I'm going to be very, very careful about how I deal with any of this stuff until I know. But I guess you will see some things. But anyways, so uh, Tenaris. Tenaris, uh, I played also uh, Odolin since then, if you check that out. I enjoyed Odolin. I need to see the game fully develop. I got to see, like, the first mission of the game. So, like, it's not really a lot of the game. So I love her. And I, I'm sure I've seen her before. I don't know. Oh, well, that's going to be that. That's it. We're done. We got that over there. Uh, we have these cards over here. So what are these? Let's go ahead and see. Oh, these are all going to be these. Okay. So we have all these. Which, these look like the original replacements for the original. Like, this is the original Arena of the Contest. Old school stuff. Are these Arena of the Contest compatible cards for new characters that I didn't otherwise have? Not sure. Are they replacement cards? Not sure. Should I be able to figure that out? Yes. Will I figure it out? Definitely. Right now? Probably not. Anyways, that's going to be some cards for your system over there. We'll put these back over here. And again, I may b not bother to open up a lot of these things because... Like over here, even this character over here, this is character 59, he must be a replacement for character 59. I can't imagine, you know, this is a good way of testing this, because if we have an inconsistent pattern of characters on this card, meaning if we have 59, then 67, and all that, that means they're definitely uh, replacements for those cards. Because we have 59, and then we have 60, and 61, and 62, so those all replace the Reaper, so that's consistent. Then we have 89. 90, 91, and 92. Again, replacements for the Reaper. So something is consistent here. I don't know if it's just art. I don't know what it is, but something's consistent over here. And then we have 99, and then the various dragons. So yeah, these definitely seem to be some degree of uh, replacement things. So I will not get too heavily into it. We have Bromley of the, Bromley of the Copycat in here. So I don't know if we're going to have any miniatures or anything, but we definitely have a bunch of cards and stuff. Now, how we get into it, but again, you'll be storing all your card trays and all this. I do need to go ahead and sort my Tenorous Adventures into this because... I have a lot of Tenorous Adventures, and it would be nice to get it all organized into these two boxes, because right now it's organized in a far, far less efficient manner. It's meant to be the Miniatures box? I don't know. I don't know how they have it done. These fit into a Callus Cubby, by the way, so precisely that if you push it a little too far in, you will not be able to get it out unless you can get a hand on the other side and pull it. Or, fun fact, I don't have it in front of me to show you right now, but there's a suction cups. You can buy suction. I wonder if you can do that. You'd have to push it in first. So, in theory, let's try this. Let's try this. Give me one second. Give me one second. I think I have one right over there, so I'm going to try this. If I, if I can have one right there, we're going to try this and see how it goes. So I'm pulling this off. We will come back to the coffee story soon enough. I just want to try something to prove a point. Okay, give me one second. Okay, this is one thing I have, okay? This is basically a, a suction thing. I use this for uh, my game table sometimes. I have a little rod that pushes things up, but sometimes either if it's not enough strength because they got jammed or stuck, or if I'll turn over you doing a spot that doesn't have the game table rod, I use these to basically go like this. We have to go, like, I think you do like this. You do that, you put this on like this, you punch it on, and you do that. Whoa, okay. This, by the way, I'm now realizing, I will include an Amazon affiliate link to this down below. Uh, this, if I recall correctly, I bought these a long time ago. You released that. But uh, basically, this is, a, I think it's $10 for a set of two. But I'll find one and send a, put a little Amazon affiliate link down below. Uh, these are very helpful for when you need a lot of suction or something. And one of those times might just be when you have a uh, game in your Calyx that you can't pry out. I never thought of this. I never once thought of this. But now I'm realizing you can do this. All you have to do... It's just, you might have to push it further in, but assuming there's a wall here. Okay, there's a wall here, so I push it in, and I push, hits the wall, I then pull, and then I pull out. Ta-da! Board Gamer Solutions to weird problems that no one else has. I'm, I feel so excited. I learned a new trick today. And this is like in my game collection area because it's for my game table. So I have it with all my uh, gizmos and gadgets that go on a game table. Uh, so anyways, uh, we'll talk about that. Next box. So, coffee. So, I was in Target. Don't remember what or why was the uh, prompt or the reason, but ultimately, I saw an espresso machine. I may have gone in there with the intent to get it. I may not have. I don't remember. But I bought this ECMP50. 
I then proceeded to make uh, lattes. There's just a, not not lattes, just a sp oh no, yeah, lattes. Because I made espresso and then mixed it with milk and steamer. It has a steamer on it, and then uh, it was a hundred dollar machine, by the way, hundred dollar machine. And I made a bunch of lattes that day. And when I say a bunch, I mean I'm pretty sure I made like three or four lattes in like a three hour period. Because I kept trying to get the uh, steaming the milk right. I wanted to get that process down, and so that resulted in me making a bunch of lattes. And uh, for the first and only time in my life, I had so much coffee that I was jittery. I've never been jittery from coffee. And I was like, oh, that's what people mean. Because I had like four lattes in two hours and like that. I was like, oh, okay, okay, that's the thing. Just because I was testing my uh, my latte making skills, and I didn't want the coffee to go to waste. The end result, though, is I did like the ECMP50 quite a bit. Okay, so we have Alternate Adventures. We got this, which can go in the garbage. You got an advertisement for Odolin. That makes sense because this guy looks cool. Oh, what's this? What's this? Hack and slash alternate mode? <gasps> Why is this in here? Why is this in here? This feels like I'm gonna go put this in my Odolin box. That's that's interesting. Anyways, um, so we got the Tenacious Dimensions rulebook. Oh, the updated rulebook. This I knew was coming. This I knew was coming. We got a campaign log. I don't know if that's updated. We have a board map. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, we got another board over here. This is just another cool board. All right, I'm gonna have to go through honestly as much as I'm doing my own unboxing over here where you get to learn about my history with lattes and fun little tricks for your uh, for your boxes that get stuck in galaxies. I'm realizing I'm probably gonna have to watch whatever Tenaris Adventures, whatever Tragoy Games put out because I have no clue how to organize this stuff. I'm sure I can figure it out, but it's probably faster to just watch somebody doing it. Anyways, so I got the ECMP M50. Uh, I enjoyed it quite a bit. I had coffees with it. I did that for years. Uh, occasionally I tried updating it. So at one point I got the ECMP50's Big Brother, which I don't remember that name because it didn't actually last. I didn't use it. Got a little dragon. There we go. Here, I need to be careful with my coffee. We got this little dragon skull over here. And we got on the reverse side, we have your ice map. So if you want more variety and theme to your maps, you can do that. And this it keeps it nice and open. I like this because it's a nice little fresh map to use. But anyways, we got this over here, which is your actual game board instead of that pullout sheet. Oh my gosh, I should do a playthrough now because now I actually have this to be able to do that playthrough, which can make everything so, so much easier. Not easier, honestly, just feel more premium than as opposed to the sheet you had before, which is basically a uh, pullout sheet that, uh, you know, a paper sheet that did not feel as premium as the rest of the game. So it's nice to have this board over here. Uh, make sure to go ahead and check out my sponsored playthrough and all that. It is a, it is a sponsored playthrough. Make sure to check out my playthrough series and I, I will come back to it at some point. We have a save sheet over here. Don't know if I know enough about these over here. Uh, what do you have? Oh, this tells you the items you have. Oh. Oh, that's smart. I don't remember this being a thing. I don't remember this being a thing at all. We have our resource tracker over here. Although you might want to use a pencil for that because that's going to change constantly. Although I guess your items could change constantly too because you can sell items if I recall correctly. Or I think maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I... I don't remember. Uh, and then we have our campaign perks. Another campaign log. So this is either a updated campaign log. It does look different. It does look different. It looks like they have made changes to the campaign log. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. So they have pre-written letters over here as opposed to the way I have it. Maybe a final quest looked different, but I'm not sure. We have this is definitely structured in a more obvious way. Oh, nice. You don't have to constantly reference the rule book each time. That's nice. Normally you have to go into the rule book and reference it. This just tells you what you get at each perk. So whenever you get a triangle, you get a medal. Whenever you get the next triangle, okay, cool, 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 cool. I like that. And then this is, wait, no, this is the perk sheet over here. Don't have any differences. So. Overall, they upgraded the perk sheet. Again, if you've watched my series, you'll know about that system. We have our rule book. I don't know how many changes they have over here, but they made changes to the rule book. That's all I really know. I mean, at a glance, it looks like a similar structure. Obviously, I mean, if they put out a new rule book, Abraham Lincoln, Vampire Hunter. Uh, obviously, if they put out uh, a new rule book, there's definitely going to be changes, but I wouldn't know what those are without diving into it. But the tricky part, the tricky part is I'm probably going to get rid of this, the old rule book because I don't think I need it, but I might save it just in case because I am in the middle of a game, which is the tricky part. More Abraham Lincoln, not exactly, but, you know, both old people who look like they could be presidents. They actually did both have a slightly Abraham Lincoln look in very different ways. Ooh, puzzles, puzzles, puzzles. Let's not reveal the puzzles for you. Okay, okay, books, board, map, and extra cards. And then we have this over here, which is going to be weeks one to two. So we have this divided up into a separate area. So weeks one to two are in this. I wonder if storage box two has weeks two to three or whatnot. So I'm technically in the middle of this over here. So if we go through an adventure, let's see, how does, how does this do this right now? Because the last, one of the problems they had, beautiful, okay. So they go straight to your scenarios over here. Chapter three, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So here's the problem. Here's the problem I have. I have been so used to going through the system the way it is that I might mentally have to readjust to the new way which is tricky for me. I have to think I, I, I want to handle this because 
I genuinely am so used. To, this goes in here like that. Yeah, okay, fine. I'm so used to the other way of doing things that I don't know if this would be confusing for me to dive into in this new way. We shall find out because I will probably try to do it the new way and hope for the best. Okay, I really have to organize stuff. Although it might not be for the next playthrough. I might, for the sake of simplicity, I might just stick with the next playthrough and um, just deal with that way. Anyways, going back to what I was saying before, but with the coffee. So I bought at one point, um, because this is the ECMP50, $100 machine, is a good machine, I made excellent coffee, I started to fall in love with lattes, because lattes are delicious, as opposed to I was having curried coffee, and if you've had both, you can imagine the difference between the two. And so lattes were definitely a, you know, an enjoyable coffee experience. Uh, but then I, I, eventually this ECMP50 broke, I don't remember exactly when, it might have been like a year later, but it didn't last the longest time. I found that they broke like every year, maybe every year or two years. And so I did replace them. The first time I just replaced one, and then the second time I tried upgrading, I believe from Bed Bath Beyond, which fun fact over here, Bed Bath Beyond has since shut down and gone bankrupt and all that, but Overstock.com has bought Bed Bath Beyond. So now if you go to Bed Bath Beyond, it's no longer Bed Bath Beyond, it's now Overstock.com. I believe, I believe I have that right. Anyways, I bought the uh, the new version of the ECMP50, hoping it'd be an upgrade, and I did not like it. So I went back to the cheaper, I returned it to Bed Bath Beyond, and then went back to the cheaper, uh, less expensive version. So these are gonna be your miniature trays over here to store everything in the miniatures, all the stuff you need, as far as the various, you know, characters or monsters, the monster miniatures specifically. So you just have two levels of trays to be able to put everything there, which I probably will do because this, this is helpful. Like I often bag things, I bag a lot of my games, but this game, I think I have it all bagged in a way that's actually kind of annoying, and this would be a nice improvement. So, we also have, ooh, these, <laughs> the problem is, even with this, it's still two giant boxes. Anyways, so I went back to the ECMP50, and kept trying that, and did that for a while. Now, somewhere along the way, I don't remember when, I don't remember when this happened. I probably can go to my Amazon history, I'm pretty sure it's Amazon, and find out when this happened. But basically, I decided to get the Breville, and I don't remember the actual item number for this one, but I have a Breville Espresso Machine, okay? That was a big upgrade, and it was a, like, you know, it was like, okay, I'm going from a $100 machine that breaks every two years to a $400 machine, and let's see how it is. Now, to its credit, I think it's even more than that. I think, it's, I think it was on sale for $400, and usually it's more than that. Now, to its credit, this Breville that I've had, I don't know exactly how long I've had it, but I've had it since before I started doing YouTube, and it hasn't broken yet. So I'm currently at five plus years on the Breville. I'm gonna include uh, affiliate links to all the things today, all the stuff. So there's gonna be affiliate links to uh, my Breville, to the uh, to the little clipper thingy, to the ECMP50, which fun fact doesn't really exist anymore. Oh, there's another thing I used to have. Once upon a time, there's another machine that's really expensive. Now, the last time I checked was really expensive. I think it was also Mr. Coffee brand machine, but it was like $30 when I got it. Or maybe no, maybe not. Maybe like 90 But like then I went to a crazy price later. But it makes cold, kind of, like whips cold milk and a little frother in it in a way that kind of made semi-decent tasting lattes for frozen like frap type situations. Not fraps, there's no ice in it. That was another machine. I'll try to include a link to that. I had that for a, year, a few years. It was never my major coffee player, but it definitely was a fun way to get extra coffee. I, I enjoy that too. Anyways, we got our tiles, tokens, and accessories. So, from there, okay, I'm gonna go, just, you know, tiles, tokens, and accessories, exactly what it sounds like. Just two boxes to hold, tiles, tokens, and accessories. Uh, so, I upgraded to the Breville at some point, and I have never looked back. The Breville has a grinder included in it, uh, so you can grind your coffee right freshly every single time you want it. Uh, it has the steamer, it has, it makes delicious lattes, espressos, whatever. Uh, it, there was an, it definitely an upgrade to the Mr. Coffee. Now, I do think that the price point differential wasn't worth the quality of the coffee difference, but the fact that it's lasted three times as long while also being better at the coffee, I think that does make it worth it. And so that's what I've had, by the way. I've had that Breville for, again, I want to say, if I had to make a roughly educated guess, I could probably pull up my phone, my phone's over there. I wanna say I got it in 2017, I think. I think that's when I upgraded. So we are looking at like seven years, seven years, almost eight years of having that machine. Does that make sense? It feels too long. But I, I, I'm just thinking of when I got it, it has to have been somewhere in that range. I'll include a note down below with the Breville with the little affiliate link uh, telling you how long I've had it. Uh, there are newer models. I'll try to include a link to the model I have. The new models have a digital screen for like different options, which I don't actually love that, but that's because I'm a little bit of an old fogey when it comes to some things in life. Not everything, but some things. So anyways, that's kind of our history of 
the coffees. Now, we're not totally done with the history because we have some updates or adjustments or whatever, which is at one point, again, from Amazon, including another link over here, I'm gonna, I found a uh, $20, roughly $20, it might be $40 now because of inflation, uh, but I found a roughly $20 cold brew maker. Okay, what it does is you put the grounds into a little glass container that has a little filter in it and it makes cold brew coffee. And I discovered cold brew coffee. I don't remember why or how or what happened or maybe I, I don't know. Cold brew coffee became a thing a while ago. And so I got these little things you can make cold brew coffee. You grind the beans, you throw it in there and you make cold brew coffee. You want a rough grind. You do not want a uh, espresso grind. So I'm using fine grind my, for my espressos and I'm using a coarse grind, not rough, a coarse grind for my uh, cold brew. And I started making cold lattes. What I would do is I'd make the cold brew and then I'd pour the concentrated cold brew into a glass. But I, if I recall correctly, it would be 50% cold brew and then like, you know, 30% or 40%, let's say 40% milk and 10% cream. Okay, and I, I use like a coffee made creamer. I am a savage, uh, not the, what's the word for it? When you are, when you're uncultured, when I'm, you're uncultured, I don't know what, there's a word for it when you're like uncultured. I can't remember what it is. But either way, I, I don't actually, I'm not actually a coffee snob in a typical sense. I love my coffees and I like particular kinds of coffees and I don't like Keurig and I don't like instant coffee. But like, I don't buy expensive beans. I don't care whether I use coffee made. I'm not a typical coffee snob. So anyways, so I got, I'd have 50% concentrated cold brew, 40% milk, and then 10% creamer. Uh, that's what I would do for my cold brews. And I love that. And I did that for a while, but I only did that in the, I only ever did that in the summer. The winter, historically, has always been for hot coffee. Always. The summers, on the other hand, which is where we come to this whole reason we're talking about this, the summers, on the other hand, have always been a mix. In summers, I've always alternated, uh, not alternated, alternated. I've had some summers, I will have cold coffee the entire summer. Other summers, I'll stick with hot coffee the entire summer. And I usually have a little bit of both. So if I'm having a cold coffee summer, I'll occasionally have a hot coffee. And I'm having a hot coffee summer, I'll occasionally have a cold coffee. But this summer has been a cold coffee summer, but with a change. I stopped doing the cold brew makers. I don't know why, but I stopped doing the cold brew makers. Okay, we get into a whole history. You're not learning that much about Tenaris right now, but you're learning a whole, bottom, a whole lot of my history with coffee. So let's open this. Now, I don't think the other ones were bound, but maybe I'm wrong. So anyways, I don't know why I made the change, but at some point, this is a new thing for me this year. This year, what I started doing is I started making espresso and putting into a container like this. So I make my espresso like I would for hot coffee but it just goes into this container and then into the fridge. And then six hours later, eight hours later, whatever it is, because what I usually do is I usually have coffee twice a day, in the morning and in the afternoon. This fun fact is a morning coffee. So I have my morning coffee and my afternoon coffee. So let's say I'm making my afternoon coffee. Uh, let's say I have my afternoon coffee. I'll already have a coffee in the fridge. I'll make a new one, put it in the fridge, take the one out of the fridge, and then use it to make my cold coffee. And so that way I'm always making the coffee for eight hours from now. So that's what I'm doing with it. So similar to the cold brew system, but instead of doing cold brew, I'm just doing lattes. Why? I don't know. I don't know why I made the change, but I am not unhappy with the change. I like, I like the coffee that I'm making. So it is a change without an intentional reason. I don't know if I specifically recommend the cold brew or not, but I do like the end result of the coffee that I'm having. So no real complaints here if that helps. Anyways. Let's go through these books over here. We have books three to four. Am I done with my coffee saga? Maybe. We'll see. I might have more for you. Hi. Right. Oh, I do have more for you. Okay. Tenaris Adventures, weeks three to four. Again, this is not going to be that much. We're just, just adjusting the way they do the rule books. Ooh, look at her. She's not Abraham Lincoln. Okay. Uh, we have this. <laughs> I imagine like a person popping onto the, popping around from, from section to section, timestamp to timestamp, and getting to that page of me showing this uh, woman over here and me saying, she's not Abraham Lincoln. And they have no context. They have no context as to why that made sense. Uh, but that did make sense in a weird way. All right, so again, this just this takes continues their process of breaking up the weeks with the puzzles. Oh my gosh, the puzzles. Okay, we have weeks five to six over here. So again, same basic idea. It's just breaking things up. Hopefully no spoilers. Fun little story going on. That's, that is a very poorly put on, I don't know, the cap doesn't feel on. The cap does not feel on. He's very famous over here. He's part of the, the Kemet. Then we have just lots of art, lots of, you know, I don't know. The game, the game looks beautiful. The game looks beautiful. The game plays fun. It, it's a lot of fun. My biggest issue with it at this point is I realize there's so much of this game, I am probably never going to go through all the content on this game, which feels bad because it's a great game, but I've already played it so much. Compared to like many games, I've already put like, I don't know, 100 plus hours into this game, which many games don't get that from me. And uh, this is a lot. This is a lot over here. Okay, this is the extras over here. So I don't know what the extras consist of. Maybe a little mini side missions. Vardok, the undead dragon. Anyways, we're going to put this back over here into our box full of books. 
And again, we'll figure out all the cars and stuff later. So, what else is left in the coffee saga? Because once we get to the new stuff, I might actually have to be semi-distracted. So our coffee saga has one more section to it, I believe, which is my ember. So, ember was a discovery not this past Black Friday, but the Black Friday before, which means I've had an ember now for, we're coming up on Black Friday soon, so for nearly two years I've had an ember mug. And what I did is I was wandering around at Kohl's, a store I love to shop at, uh, I was wandering around at Kohl's and I saw this ember mug, and I was like, that seems like an interesting concept. Is this how this is? Yeah, that's how it is. I was like, that seems like an interesting concept. I like the idea of this, and I, I grabbed it off the shelf, and then I promptly saw it was $130, something crazy, and I was like, okay, the idea of my heated coffee is an interesting concept, but I don't care enough to pay $130 for a heated coffee mug. That seems insane. But that particular Black Friday, I wasn't buying that much stuff. Uh, every Black Friday is different. Some Black Fridays I buy a lot of stuff, other Black Fridays I don't. I will say, by the way, uh, I'm filming this shortly after Prime Day, and holy hell did I buy a lot of stuff on Prime Day. It's the most I've ever spent on a single Prime Day. And I know, I'm supporting Amazon. Uh, to those who don't like that, I do buy from Amazon. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just, it is what it is. Well, not is what it is. Well, that's a whole different conversation. I shouldn't have opened that can of worms. We'll come back to that. We'll come back to that. So, we got a few miniatures over here. Nothing crazy, but, you know, if you want some miniatures, we got these guys. Oh, there's some angels. The angels. The angels, and then this guy over here. We got, so, I don't know if they're replacement miniatures, but we got, okay, we got three different sculpts over here. So, I'm just going to show you the three different sculpts. So, these are three we have. So, let's get you these. Can it zoom? There we go. So, these are the three different sculpts of these miniatures you have. Don't know if they're extras, replacements, who knows what over here. But, uh, anyways, they're here. So, back to what I was saying over here, but the, um ember situation we'll come back to the amazon situation later if i remember to which i hopefully will forget uh anyways the ember situation so i decided to that particular black friday i wasn't actually buying that much stuff and so i was like you know what this will be my treat i'll try it out and the good news is if i don't like it i can return it and so i bought the ember mug the goal of the ember mug and the ember mug is a mug that heats up your coffee it maintains the heat of the coffee and i was like you know what whenever i do have a coffee my my coffees last me like 20 minutes or whatever it is my hot coffees and towards the end of it they do feel a little less good because they're a little warmer or cooler and it's like this will make my 20 minute coffee a better experience holy hell did it make it a better experience i will include a referral link to the ember mug down below um but i should do this in all my videos drop referral links while telling life stories so the ember mug what i thought it would do is make my 20 minute coffee better what it really did is by maintaining the heat of my coffee for as long as I wanted to, it made my 20 minute coffee experience not a 20 minute coffee experience. Now my 20 minute latte experience is now usually like 45 minutes to an hour long because I don't, it used to be, I didn't, I didn't realize I was doing this, but I was drinking it faster because the heat was going down. But when the heat's consistent the whole time, I sip, go back to what I was doing, I sip, I have my coffee for 45 minutes to an hour every single day. And I love that because that means that's two hours of my day that I'm drinking coffee, which is delightful. And so the Ember Mug really, I don't wanna say it changed my life because that's a bit of a dramatic statement to make, but it, I mean, it changed my coffee experience, if that makes sense. We got some more miniatures in here, nothing crazy. I'll kind of pop this up for you to see. So we got these over here. Yeah, let's go there, those three, and then those two. Those are the new miniatures we got there. And then the rest of it's gonna be an empty tray for all your various heroes. So anyways, so I, I definitely changed my coffee experience. There's no question about that. And I love it uh, to the point that I have, I think I've gifted Ember mugs to, I think three people right now. I think three people I've gifted an Ember mug. It's a hundred dollar mug. I've gifted it to three people. What kind of like, I must either really like those people or I really believe in the coffee experience. By the way, it's a combination of both. Anyways, so that's the situation. And I've talked about the Ember mug a lot. I'm sure I've sold more than three, but uh, I've gifted three. I've, I'm still using my original Ember mug. I have had to replace the base. Fun fact, if you have an Ember mug, sometimes the base will stop charging. Uh, it's the base issue, not the cup issue. The bases are like 30 bucks, so it's not cheap, but like I've had to replace the base twice now. Although the second time I had them do it because I complained to them. I was like, hey, this base breaks too frequently. Like it's been three, I'm on my third base in two years. It's not okay. And they gave me a credit for a new base. So I've replaced the base twice but only bought a base once, if that makes sense. So over here, we got our terrain box, which will store all your terrain, all these things in here. This is just looks like one level, but with this little thing there. Anyways, that's gonna be your, your storage box over here, which means we're almost done with the story, which is perfect timing. So anyways, Ember Mug definitely changed my experience. Uh, I usually have that, the absence of the Ember Mug is just that I am currently doing my cold coffees, but the Ember Mug shall be back. I've debated getting an Ember Travel Mug, but the problem is I don't like cleaning them. And the travel mug, I don't know when and where I'd clean it. Like, obviously, wherever I go, eventually, there's water. But, like, I wouldn't want it to, like, have the coffee grime in it. So, that's why I haven't, yeah. I think the Ember mug 
Then the travel mug is probably good for a daily commute. So if you have a daily commute where you have an office where you can wash it when you get there, that's probably great. But I don't do a daily commute. I do a, um, I travel like to conventions and there I don't think the Ember travel mug is as useful. Uh, maybe it would be, but I just instinctively, I don't think that's the target use for it because of the cleanliness aspect of it. All right, so we've done all the coffee stuff. I want to say that have I completely explored my coffee experience here? I think so. I mean, I can get into a conversation about my beans or the creamer or all that stuff, but like, I don't feel the need. That's that's going down a rabbit hole. As far as coffee equipment, you've kind of gotten got to my entire coffee history, as well as a whole bunch of Amazon referral links down below. I should start listening. I don't know. I feel I, I've done Amazon referral links in the past with board games, and it's never really done that much for me. So I kind of stopped putting the work in. Uh, but it's something that like it did make money. Don't get me wrong. Like I've made like seventy dollars from Amazon referral links, but I've done that by spending dozens of hours uh, putting those referral links into so many videos and then realizing I'm just not getting that kind of money from it. Anyways, I should probably check by the way. I should check to see what the residual is because I have Amazon referral links in place, which means in theory, if people use this on old videos, like I should check if I've made like, if I made $2 this month from Amazon referral link, that's probably worth it because it means over time, those dozens of hours have a long tail effect because I haven't put links in my videos in years. Anyways, that's going to be our little dice over here. We're going to zoom in now because I think we're gonna need that zoom in. Okay, so we got this die over here. This is gonna be, let's zoom into the die. Okay, this is a cool die. I like it. It's very shiny and glittery and pretty. This is gonna be the new Tenera stuff that you got, or that I got, I guess. You may have gotten it as well. Uh, we also have in here little tokens, which are okay. They're, you know, just little, little tokens for the game over here. These. So we have like the money, we have the word, the resources, just give you a little resources to track your uh, items instead of needing the cars necessarily all the time. But they don't feel that cool. So uh, I highly recommend, ooh, maybe I'll pick up some bits from Top Shelf Gamer. Top Shelf Gamer is a sponsor of the show. They sponsor our Deluxified Component Series, but they have clay, wood, metal, and gold. So I probably should have them do that because that'd be great. But there's a reason you have the cards in the game, which is the tricky part. So like, it's a nice component upgrade thing, but realistically you still kind of need what is in this let's see what this is anyways so amazon we still have to get to amazon but let's go ahead and look oh these are the dice trays yay so we have our teneris dice tray over here to uh roll your teneris die let's go ahead and open this up or close this up i should say and we put, roll our dice into the dragon's mouth so as far as Amazon, I'll, I'll do a very short thing on Amazon before we dive into the rest just to get out of the way because once I, once I bring up a topic, I don't actually want to avoid it. It feels, it feels disingenuous to, uh, I don't like dodging things. Anyways, so Amazon. Um, Amazon has a very complicated reputation because, well, not complicated, actually. I think this won't clip in. There we go. There we go. So here we go, our little dragon tray where you can now roll your dragon dice. It's actually a pretty nice uh, dice tray overall. It's got like, I like the firmness of the edges. Uh, anyways, 12. You can't see it that well, but we got 20. I got a 20. Cool. Well, that was a good, that was, I'm glad I rolled it three times. So Amazon has a not that complicated reputation as being a, um, not the best to its employees, overworking them. I don't know if they underpay them. I think they pay them decently enough, but they overwork them, push them too hard. There's the constant refrains and jokes about Amazon employees having to uh, uh, pee in water bottles to meet their productivity standards. I don't know enough about that. I really don't. I mean, that's not, not, not to like wash my hands of it. I, I know the headlines that I read. I don't know enough about the actual day-to-day -day of anyone who works there. I do know recently, because I bought stuff on Prime Day, because that's always nice said stuff. I, I spent a lot of Prime Day because I moved recently. So there's tons of stuff that I was like, okay, let's get it all, like, let's get all the stuff together. But like when I actually had some uh, Amazon worker drop something off, and I said to them, I was like, oh, like, you know, like hope things are not too, hope you're not too overworked or too crazy. And they were like, no, no, it's fine. I was like, oh, I, I always read things about how you guys have a very like, hard time and he's like oh no some people do but like most of us are fine so like that's not any sort of pass it's just to say that that kind of experience does make me think maybe i should take some headlines with a grain of salt but i still assume that there's issues with amazon uh workers and standards um i am somebody who i think that oh life I think everyone chooses, picks and chooses the issues, not to care about it, but to have them affect how you operate. So there are certainly companies I won't buy from. There are people who I will uh, boycott in different ways or shapes or forms. Amazon's not on the list. I understand and respect that they are probably not treating their workers the best. Uh, Amazon is the most convenient way for me to buy stuff. It's not even about the price. It's literally just about not having to go to the store. When I go to Walmart like, or any store for that matter, not that Walmart's that much better. When I go to any store, I find I don't get a good sense of what I want, uh, and I do a lot of window shopping. So I tend to 
have a harder time buying what I want and buy a lot of stuff that I didn't need. Uh, versus Amazon, I tend to buy exactly what I want, research it a dozen different ways, and I know Amazon reviews have their own history and issues, um, and get exactly what I need. And so Amazon to me is very much a strong convenience. I assume most of you watching this do shop on Amazon. No judgment from me here. I assume some of you watching this not only don't shop on Amazon, but some of you don't shop on Amazon and don't judge others who do. And then some of you probably don't shop on Amazon and do judge others who do. And to that small segment, I'll say that all of us have limited capacity to care for everything. A limited capacity to care for everything. That's the way I'd put it. Uh, you can't, you know, not everyone's going to boycott Chick-fil-A because not everyone's going to do that. Some people will, some people will not. Not everyone's going to boycott Amazon. Not everyone's going to boycott Nike or Apple when they use sweatshops to make whatever they're, you know, whatever's being made internationally. We all have limited capacity to choose where we put our energy and care. I think it is a good thing for all of us to find a place to put our energy, a place to try to improve the world, whether it's through our actions or lack of actions, or whether it's through ways we try to inspire or help others. I do think doing good is a good thing. I think you need to be mindful about understanding that not everyone can do everything that stops. Again, you might be against capitalism and yet you're buying your coffee at Starbucks. Those things are Those things can be compatible. Because if you're in a system, sometimes it's hard to not fully benefit from the system. Uh, like another good example is I, I'm very strongly against the way we treat... I'm, like, I'm not against killing animals for food. Really not at all. Um, that's a long conversation. I am against the system we have, and this video is all over the place. I am against the system we have in which the animals are raised in semi-torturous environments where they're like just stuffed into these spaces where there's not enough space for them to exist, and then we kill them for food. Like, kill the animal for food. I'm okay with the food chain hierarchy. I am. You might not be, but that's, that is, I, I am. I'm not okay with the suffering and torturing that they go through in the current system. But I'm also not going to pay four times as much to get, you know, open range, farm, whatever. And so, like, that's just a... Those things can be compatible. I could not like the system and still support the system. It is, it's unfortunate, it's messy, but life is messy. So uh, I guess that's that's my major takeaway there. Anyways, we got deluxe miniatures over here for the conditions. If you want conditions for your miniatures, uh, sorry, condition tokens, uh, instead of the little tokens they have in the game, these will also make it more obvious because these give you all the various conditions just uh, as miniatures instead, which is cute. I like it. I don't know if I'll use them or not, but I, I might use them. I just don't know yet. They're definitely bigger, because the problem is the tokens they have right now are very small and hard to follow. Okay, this is going to be those. Now, I don't know, where are these things supposed to go? We just got this giant storage box, then we got these extra things. I mean, they can't stay in here, that's for sure. They'll have to be dumped somewhere else. So we have another large miniature over here. Do the boxes even store the large miniatures? Like, I don't think I saw a clear way to store the large miniatures in there. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. Maybe I wasn't paying enough attention. I mean, I wasn't paying enough attention. I was talking about coffee the whole time. Okay, we have another miniature for you over here. This is going to be uh, this guy. This is a uh, mythical, I'm, I'm realizing you're getting an empty table as I try to get this out here. Uh, mythical Phoenix over here. So we got a mythical Phoenix for you. That's this. Here we go. That's pretty cool. I mean, it's nice. I mean, the miniatures in general in Jagori games are insane. Like, this is the tricky part. Like, someone asked me if I'm getting Odolin, and I was like, yes. And they said, are you going all in? And I'm like, not unless they send it to me. Like, if they send it to me, yes, I'll take the all in. But I'm not buying the all in because I'm at a point where every game is different. And you do have to know. Like, I'll still go all in on uh, DC United, for example. I'm going to go all in on that. Because that is a system that will benefit from all the content. I've done videos on this. I've done two full videos. I'll, if I remember, I'll link them down below. I've done two full videos on the types of content that I go all in on and the types of content that I don't. Because there is a difference. Some content, we'll do this, this dragon last. This I'm going to see what they are over here. Uh, but yeah, there's a difference in the types of content that you go on in. I just think there is. Because um, for me, some games, I will play all the content and other or or have access to being able to tag in all the content and others I won't. Terrace Adventures have become clear to me that as much as I love it, I don't think I'll ever finish it, finish it. I will enjoy it. I don't know if I'll ever play the whole system again. I don't know if I'll do dragon ball battles, boss battles. I fully plan on finishing the campaign, that's for sure. But everything else, I don't know. So here are our little dashboards, our player dashboards. Okay, okay, let's take a look. So these are gonna be just copies of the same thing. So let's open this up and see what we got. And we have our tokens as well for our ones and twos and all that, or for the skill tokens basically in the game. All right, so I don't think I need to put them back in. Oh my gosh, the amount of Tenera stuff I have is a little insane. Like, and again, is this even accounted for in the big boxes? I hope they are. So here are your player dashboards. Now, all of this in my playthrough series, all of this will be done at some point or another. Like, you'll see all this stuff incorporated into the series, but I don't know exactly when it'll be. But this is going to be a player dashboard. You can store all your various things over here on this, your main dashboard, uh, tracking all your stuff. So it's a cool dashboard. And you can track your cards and these little card rails. you got two card rails over there as well. So that's helpful. I like it. 
I mean, I'll see how functional it is. Everything's a good idea until it's time to actually use it. What's the, there's an expression. Um, no plan survives first contact with the enemy. The plan is this, the enemy is playing the game. That might sound too harsh, that's not what I mean. You hopefully understand what I mean. The, the point is, until you're actually using it, some things sound great and some things are, are great. Okay, this, this is a fun dragon. Okay, let's see if I can pull it out or if it's pulled in. Is it in there? No, it's just, okay. Sometimes they have little plastic clips on them. Okay, this is a very cool dragon. Do they not have a pre-painted version of this? I'm gonna have to find out if they had a pre-painted version of this because I thought they did, but maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Because this, even just as a table presence, like this is a nice dragon. It is hefty, it's cool. I, I wanna go see the pre-painted version. But we have this over here. This is gonna be your dragon. That's what we got. This is a very cool dragon. This is part of the most recent crowdfunding campaign. And it's it's cool. I like it. It's got a nice like that. I'm gonna go ahead and probably put it I need to find if they have a pre-painted one. If they have a pre-painted one, it's almost certainly going on the shelf behind me. Uh, the non-pre-painted one is hard because I'd be fighting against pre-painted ones. But this is, or just painted, but I don't know when I paint this. I used to paint, once upon a time. I used to paint, and then I got way too busy and haven't painted in a long time. Anyways, that is going to be your uh, unboxing of Tenaris Adventures. Your unboxing of the last batch of stuff. Uh, I don't think there'll be another one. I Even, if I, even once I sort it all, I don't think I'm going to do a Here's How I Sort It video because... I believe those videos already exist, but maybe I will. Maybe I will. We'll find out. You never really know. And then I'll see you again when Odolin shows up, because I do want to go ahead and go through that. Anyways, until next time, I am Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Uh, I hope you enjoyed my completely chaotic unboxing. That was more of a history of coffee, a little bit of a conversation around uh, values and personal beliefs and all that, and then uh, past that. Until next time, uh, I hope you have a good one.